Hey what's up guys, it's Brooke and today I'm going to be filming my most requested video of all video history for my channel. So a lot of people from YouTube don't know this, but a lot of people who know me in person know this about me. I have two pet axolotls and I love them so much. Their names are Patchy and Toothless and I've had them for almost three years. Since they are a pretty unique pet, a lot, and I mean a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. People I don't even talk to message me and they're like, hey, what are those called again? What are, what are those names of your fish? Are they fish? Are, what are they? Uh, how do you take care of them? I want to get one, but I don't know anything about them. It's basically chaos in my DMs all the time because of these two pets. And it's been like this ever since I first got them. And when I first got them, it was when I first started my channel. It was a few months before I first started it. So for the past almost three years, I've been getting these messages like crazy. And today is the day I'm finally gonna film the video that everyone's been asking for. I want, if you're thinking about getting an axolotl, I want you to pay very close attention to this video because I'm, it, don't skip any parts because I, I'm gonna be telling you guys some useful stuff and some things that I had to learn the hard way owning these guys. So in this video, I am going to be telling you guys some basic things about these axolotls because axolotl is kind of a weird name if you never heard of them. I'm gonna tell you what they are. I'm gonna be telling you how to house them properly. I'm gonna be telling you their diet, basically all their care. And I'm gonna be telling you guys some tips and tricks that I have learned throughout my three years of having them. Okay, so I should start by saying I have two axolotls, like I have said, and their names are Patchy and Toothless. Now, I named Patchy actually by, in middle school, we watched this movie in my science class about this dinosaur named Patchy, and I told one of my friends at the time, I said, whatever pet I get next, I don't know what it's gonna be, but I'm gonna name it Patchy because I love that name. My original plan when I first got Patchy was to just get Patchy, I just wanted this one axolotl and nothing else. However, the breeder that I got them from told me that these two have been raised together since birth and uh, that he basically would give me a really good deal if I just took them both. I thought about it and I was like, you know what, that's really cool. I'll, I'll take the other one too. The other one's name is Toothless and before its name was Toothless, his name was actually Rambo. I named him Rambo because I thought he looked kind of rambunctious. However, like a month into having Toothless, um, I realized he wasn't rambunctious at all and that Patchy was actually more rambunctious than he was. So one day I was feeding him and this is before the whole thing got popular about them looking like Toothless. Um, but I was feeding Toothless and he like peeped out of this hole and the way he peeped out looked just like Toothless off of How to Train Your Dragon. And then it just hit me right then and there. I hit up some of my friends and I was like, hey, I kind of want to change his name. What do you guys think? And they were like, yeah, do it. That's really cool. So to start off with some basic info, axolotls are known as Mexican walking fish because they are only located in one Mexican lake in Mexico and they're really rare and they're almost extinct in the wild. However, in captivity, they're pretty decently easy to find. When I first got my boys, I actually, it took me forever to actually find where I could get them. I had to drive an hour and a half away to go get them. However, now uh, if I just drive like an hour away to a pretty big pet shop, I can find them. However, I do not recommend getting them from pet shops. I know if, you, if that's your only way you think you can get them, then go for it but I recommend a breeder. There is a whole bunch of different colors of axolotls. However, there are four main colors. There's albino, wild type, leucistic, I think I think it's melamoyand. I know I'm probably pronouncing that last one wrong. It's been years since I got these guys, so give me a break. But yeah, there's those four different colors and there's also a whole bunch of different other colorations. If you want more unique colorations, you'll have to put out the big dollars to get them. Now, you might be looking at an axolotl and be thinking, wow, they look really strange. What are those little things right here that are like psh, psh? These creatures are actually salamanders. Um, I call them my fish around my friends because I know if I said axolotls, a lot of people who I know would not have any idea what that is. So I just say, oh, my fish. 
but to be truthful, they are definitely not fish. They do live in the water and they live in fresh water, not, not salt water. And that's something that's really cool about them is since they live in fresh water, it's like they're so cool for being a freshwater fish because usually if you want something really unique, you have to get a salt water tank. But yeah, they need water and oxygen to live. Full grown axolotl is usually 9 to 12 inches long and they can live to be up to 9 years old. One more really cool thing about axolotls, there's so many cool things about these creatures, but I think the coolest thing about them, and it's very well known, is they can regenerate any limb that they lose. This is actually something that makes them be put in science labs so often because they're just crazy creatures. Okay, now that we know some random stuff about axolotls, we're gonna move on to housing. What do I need to own an axolotl? What would I have to get? I'm about to tell you everything you're gonna need. Obviously the first thing you're gonna need is an axolotl. So axolotls can range anywhere from, I've seen that the cheapest, um, 15 to 20 dollars, like totally, that's like absolute cheapest. And I've seen at the most expensive, I know I could probably go higher, but 150. So there's a, there's a range there. So for being a aquatic creature, they are gonna be more on like the expensive side, but just for being a pet, they're really cheap, if that makes sense. I got mine for $40. Also a side note, I just remembered, but make sure to only get one axolotl if you plan on only having one tank. Because I made this mistake and I really, really want people to listen to this part of the video. Axolotls are so vicious. They're not gonna be too mean to you, but they are so mean to other creatures. When I first got my axolotls, I was told, hey, they've been housed together their whole life. You should put them together because that's just how they've been. So I listened to the breeder. I put them together and they probably lived together for almost a year. It wasn't until towards the end of the year that they started getting in fights over food and the fights got out of hand. I mean, there was one time, I think, no, which one, but one of them bit the leg off of the other one. And after that, I was like, you know what? They're getting hurt, I'm gonna separate them. So that's why they are in two different tanks. So before making the same mistake that I did, I highly encourage you, do your research, make sure that you just get one if you only have room for one. So yes, one tank per axolotl. Going with that as well, don't get any other fish to be living in the tank with them. This is another mistake I made. So it was a few months into owning my axolotls. They were living together still. I decided I was gonna get a small little sucker fish to help clean the tank out. So I named this sucker fish Tabascus and he was helping clean the tank, minding his own business. It wasn't even the end of the night and I noticed my sucker fish was gone. To this day, I do not know which axolotl ate it, but I did not mess with putting any other creatures in their tank after that. So yeah, um, don't make my mistakes. Another thing I looked into is getting a snail and then I did research before getting that and I saw that they even try to eat snails. So axolotls will basically eat anything that's in front of them. They don't really care. You are obviously also gonna need a tank. So some people say if you have a 10 gallon tank that will be all right. And I mean, it will be, but I highly, highly, highly recommend to at least give them a 20 gallon tank. Um, both of my fish are in 20 gallon tanks and they love it. Patchy is in a 20 gallon long tank and that is definitely what I recommend. Um, if I had space for it more in my room, that's what Toothless would be in as well, but Toothless is in a 20 gallon high tank. Tanks can range probably, I think, I know I got my whole setup, like my stand and my tank for like 200 or 250, it was something like that. So the setup is going to be a little bit more on the pricier side. Going with that, you are going to need a stand. When I first got my fish, I um, just put them on a stand and I didn't know, but the uh, sides of the tank were hanging off of it. And I didn't think it was a big deal and I went to the pet shop to get um, a new stand. The lady was like, you need to get a stand today because what can happen is if it's on the stand too long with uh, the sides hanging over, it can like break 
because it'll be too much water. So yes, make sure that your stand holds the whole tank and you have no parts of the tank hanging off. So once you have your tank and you fill it with water, make sure to get a thermometer. You're gonna need a thermometer because a lot of people know this is the hard part about owning axolotls. You have to keep their tank um, in the 60s range. They can be anywhere from like 60 degrees to like 68 degrees tops, but you want it to be in the 60s. So a lot of people, if you live in a place like LA or Hawaii or any place that it's warm year round, I would highly recommend getting a cooling system for your tank. Now cooling systems are pretty pricey. I think they're a couple hundred dollars, but if you're living in a place like that, you're gonna have to get it or else your axolotl is gonna get really stressed out. However, I do not live in a place where it is hot year round, so I only have to worry about that when summer comes along. So during the cold seasons, I just let the tank do its thing and every couple weeks I put fresh cold water in it. In the summer, I will teach you guys uh, a little later in this video what I actually do to cool my tank down. But yeah, so you're gonna want some kind of cooling system. You can get an aquatic fan. Um, if you don't want to do the whole pricey thing, but you live in like a place where it's a little bit warm, I'd recommend that. But if you live in a place where it's steaming hot all the time, you're going to have to get a cooling system if you want a pet axolotl. Fans can range uh, $20 to $30, I think. Forgive me if my um, pricing is off. Like, I didn't do any, like, research before this video. I'm just going off of what I remember in my head and I got all this equipment, you know, three years ago, so. A very important thing that you're gonna need for your tank is a filter, um, and you don't just wanna get any filter, you're gonna wanna get a sponge filter. When I first was doing research about what to get for my axolotls, I got this one sponge filter, but it ended up not working, so my Aunt Monica, she hit me up and she's like, hey, I got this sponge filter um, you can use, and they seem to like it pretty well. When it comes to hides, you're going to want to go with more believable hides. Um, that's what I would recommend. I wouldn't recommend like the whole Spongebob theme, you know? I would recommend like wood pieces and stuff like that. And you're also going to want two hides per axolotl. Um, and I say that like they're going to be living together, but don't do that. Don't, don't make my mistake. Make sure that at least one of the hides is um, a hide so no one could see them even if even though you're gonna want to see them, they love the hides where no one can see them unless you pick up the hide. And I recommend to at least give them one of them. Honestly, I think both of my axolotls are out right now. They literally are both out right now. So it's not like you're never gonna see your axolotl. It's just times when they wanna, you know, do their own thing, I would just give them that space. You're also gonna want to provide plants, and the way I did this is, since Patchy is lighter coloring, I gave him the more tropical looking plants, and since Toothless is darker coloring, I tried to give him the darker plants, so that way they feel like they're blending in more to their surroundings. If you're wanting to get um, live plants, I recommend doing a lot of research on that because there's some type of plants that um, can do harm to axolotls. So make sure you do your research. You're also going to want to provide a hood because I haven't experienced this with my axolotls personally, but some axolotls are known for jumping out of the tank because they are salamanders, you know? And, and last but definitely not least, this is very important that if you are looking to get an axolotl, you listen to this. For substrate, you should get either one of these three things. A plain bottom tank, nothing on it, clear, it's easy to clean up messes, and there's no risk. Really big rocks, um, really big, like almost the size of the axolotl covering the ground, or sand, thin sand. Do not, under any circumstance, get gravel because the axolotls will actually, um, they're known for picking up gravel in their mouth and actually swallowing it and that can cause impaction. You don't want to mess with impaction, just don't, don't do it. Just get one of those three things. Um, I actually never did the whole plain bottom tank, but I have done the big rocks. I think I, I did big rocks for like the first, 
I believe, year and a half that I had them. They both had big rocks in their tank. And they love that. But then I was like, you know what? I don't really like the look of it anymore. It's getting old. So I switched to sand and they've been loving the sand. So I just recommend going down one of those routes. Don't just avoid gravel. Just listen to me. Avoid the gravel or else your exolotl is going to be in some pain and possibly in the sky. Okay, moving on to diet. I have no idea what I just did with my hand there. It was like, so exolotls are carnivores. Um, they will eat just about any meat that you put in front of their face. They are not picky. I personally feed my exolotls every other day as well. I heard, um, I read up a study a long time ago saying that you shouldn't feed them every day for some reason. I don't really remember. I'm just doing all this off the top of my head. I'm kind of winging this video. But I feed my exolotls on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. It's just my schedule and that's how I keep them on track. And I feed my exolotls earthworms. I feed them, um, I feed them baby night crawlers. Yeah. So feeding them is actually pretty cheap. I just have to like every two weeks go in to the store and get them. But yeah, it's just like $5 for a thing of them. And yeah, they're just, they're really easy to take care of. So with feeding them the earthworms, if you have a baby exolotl, I do not recommend earthworms. I actually recommend bloodworms. Sounds gross. Um, they are kind of gross, but gotta do what you gotta do if you want the pet. So I actually get bloodworms in the winter because that's when stores around my house stop selling earthworms. So I actually pre-order some bloodworms uh, and drive about an hour away and get like five packs of these bloodworms and they love them. You can actually feed bloodworms like for a pretty long time but with babies I especially recommend it because it's not as hard as an earthworm and it just will digest a lot easier. If you're gonna get a full-on size earthworms if you cannot find the baby earthworms then this is really gross but you're gonna have to cut it um, I had to do this before, um, ugh, it's just, ugh, it makes me want to throw up. But yes, you're going to have to cut the earthworm up and feed it because it's just going to be too big for the exolotl to digest and have them eat it properly. But yeah, I just give them um, about a worm or two every other day and they pretty much enjoy that and it keeps them good and healthy. That was a pretty quick segment, moving on to the last one, which is tips and tricks. So going back to what I was talking about when we were talking about housing with keeping the water cool, I'm gonna tell you guys some ways that I do this. This is something that I would say is the most stressful thing about owning axolotls is keeping their water temperature down so low. And honestly, I've been doing this for three years. Like to me, I, I don't even think about it much anymore because I just look at the temperature of the water, if it's, getting too high is what I do. So I have an aquatic fan and I will move that back and forth between tanks um, depending on what the temperatures are. And I turn that on all day every day in the summer. Now during the winter and the fall, uh, I don't have to worry about, even the spring, like I don't have to worry about the water temperatures too much right now because my room just stays cool. In the summer what I do is every um, every day I, I get a jug, a huge two liter of like pop. I take that two liter, fill it with water all the way up, um, put the cap on, put it in the freezer, and after a, like a day or a few hours in the freezer, it will be like all frozen. And I just put it in one tank, and this cools down the water so well. Especially if you just have a 20 gallon tank, it will cool it down pretty well. And what I do is I just put it in there for a few hours. Um, once it's like totally melted, I plop it back into the freezer. Oh, so it does take some effort. Um, it's honestly pretty easy though. Like I don't even want to say it takes too much effort, but if you're someone who's never going to be home, then just get a water cooler, you know? I highly recommend to get buckets. This sounds really weird, but when I'm cleaning their tanks, I have these little buckets that I put them in, and then I put them in this bigger bucket, and I just highly recommend if you're gonna get exolotls, get some buckets for when you're cleaning the tanks or if you ever have to move houses. Just be prepared and get some buckets. Another tip that I recommend to do is to pre-order bloodworms if you plan on using them. Um, unless if you live somewhere where they sell them all the time, I would just recommend to buy like five packs at a time. Plop them in the freezer, 
and then you're good for the next, you know, how, however long. Another trick is I only do this every couple months, but every couple months I will totally clean out their tank and when I say totally, I mean totally, like all of the water comes out of it. I replace all of the water and everything. And um, a way that I learned how to do this when I first got them is if you get a pipe um, and you suck through it, uh, it will actually make it so the water will come out and it will be like this um, hose, I guess you could say. And it just makes it really easy for cleaning the tank. I also want to bring up handling. Um, people do know you can handle your axolotls. To be totally honest, I don't really hold them a lot because I just don't see the point. Um, but yeah, you can hold your axolotls. Um, I pet them, I would say, a decent amount. Whenever I have friends over, I usually pet them just to show, hey, they're nice. But um, if you ever do want to hold your axolotl, don't do it all the time. But you just have to place one hand underneath them and one hand above them. Another thing is axolotls don't like lights. Um, for some of the clips I probably put in this video, I probably turned the lights to their tank on so you could get a better look at them. But honestly, 98% of the time, I don't even use the lights in their tanks because I just know that they don't like it. So I recommend, even though it is prettier with the lights on, just especially when no one's over and you're just chilling in your room, turn the lights off. They'll, they'll appreciate it so much. Just don't stress them out with having the lights on. They don't like it. I honestly only ever turn on the lights if I have someone new over and they really want to see them and they can't find them. Then I'll be like, okay, I'll turn the lights on for a second and then the lights will be on for like 30 seconds then I'll turn them back off because I just don't, I don't like doing that to them. And the final, uh, I guess, tip you could say, because this is not really a trick, but um, don't be afraid of them biting you. Um, they have these really tiny teeth. I've been bitten before by them. They don't draw any blood. If anything, it tickles. <laughs> like, <laughs> it weirdly enough tickles. Uh, so, <laughs> I just wouldn't even stress it about being worried about them biting you. They're really cool creatures and they're, they're just awesome. So yeah, we are brought to the end of the video. I hope that you guys did enjoy this video and if you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it'll make me smile. If you want to see any more videos like this, then just make sure to leave them in the comments below. Any suggestions? It can be even videos not like this that you want to see. I don't know. I love hearing what you guys want to see. So yeah, just leave them in the comments below. Um, if you want to add me on Snap or Instagram, then here they are. Here you go. Now whenever someone sends me questions, I'm going to send them to this video. Yeah, I will see you guys next time I see you guys with a brand new video.